When it comes to setting up your home office that doubles up as your YouTube studio, the thought of it can be really daunting, but just imagine a space that fuels your creativity and maximizes efficiency. From the perfect ergonomic chair that cradles you in comfort, to the ideal microphone for the best audio, a good monitor that makes your workflow super smooth, the ideal lighting guide and just an overall aesthetically looking home office, you've clicked on the right video, so buckle up and let's go for the ride. Starting off with the monitor, this will heavily depend on personal preference and the available desk space. The sizes range from 21 inches to 57 inches with the latest gen of the Odyssey Neo G9. In my case, I went with the Super Ultra monitor in the form of the 49 inch Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 and for few good reason. Being a digital creator, it comes in clutch thanks to its screen real estate which enables me to navigate through my timelines with so much ease. Secondly, having considered getting two 27 inch monitors side by side, the thought of the bezel in the middle didn't sit right with me which brings me to the next thing, aesthetics. Besides its main role of functionality, having a monitor that flows well with my setup adds to the overall aesthetic appeal of my space. From an ergonomic standpoint, its 1000R curvature matches the field of view of the human eye which allows for a comfortable viewing experience whilst using the monitor. For those who might not know, when you view a flat screen monitor for an extended period of time, your eyes make small but continual focus shifts that lead to increased fatigue. This monitor's curved display helps your eyes maintain a constant focus across the entire screen, resulting in less fatigue and a more comfortable viewing experience. Budget is also another thing you'll have to factor in when getting a monitor for your setup. For the average consumer, the Odyssey Neo G9 might be a bit of an overkill. The good thing, there's lots of budget options you can always pick depending on your need. For example, the LG Ultrafine Argo is a good editing monitor that offers 4K resolution, 95% DCI-P3 color gamut, high contrast ratio, and is also quite affordable given the specs it comes with. While on the subject of monitors, we might as well talk about the monitor arm. I'm a big advocate of monitor arms owing to the fact that they add so much ergonomics to any monitor setup by allowing continuous adjustments and orientations. Case in point, I'm able to adjust my monitor further back, closer to myself, swivel left or right and that allows for the ultimate user experience. Something to note though, before buying one, you'll need to take into account the following. First, a monitor arm that can handle the weight of your monitor. The last thing you want is realizing your monitor arm can handle the weight of your monitor after buying it. My personal recommendation is the HX Agatron Monitor Amp as it can handle some of the heaviest monitors in the game. Do keep in mind though it's a bit on the pricier side. Next, you'll want to ensure you're getting a monitor amp that fits the VESA mount interface of your monitor. On the flip side, in the event that you make that mistake, there are universal VESA mount adapters that you can use to mount the monitor amps. Thirdly, monitor amps instantly create space and help reduce visual clutter. Using my monitor as an example, when doing its initial unboxing, I had it on its original monitor stand and not only did it eat up a lot of my desk space, but also made my desk look so cluttered which brings me to the next benefit of a monitor arm, cable management. As we all know, the cable mesh starts from the cables plugged into the I.O. of the monitor, but the beauty about it, most monitor arms, if not all, come with cable management channels which help reduce the cable mesh, hence making your desk setup look aesthetically pleasing. Moving along, the next essential is the famous sit-stand desk. Now, up until the start of the pandemic, not many people knew about them but with the boom of the home office and desk setup concept during the infamous lockdowns, it sort of became the standard for many home office and desk setup enthusiasts and for a few good reasons. I'm sure most of you know prolonged sitting can lead to various health issues including back pain, poor posture and reduced blood circulation. At first, they might look like nothing but over time they slowly start to compound. Take kyphosis for example, it comes as a result of poor posture and I'm a culprit of this myself. Every now and then, unknowingly, I find myself leaning towards my monitor with my shoulders rolled in and that right there is how it starts. Now imagine doing that over 10 years. The effect on your overall posture is most definitely going to be bad and that's where a sit stand desk comes in. Using the four programmable settings on the control module, you can adjust your desk to different heights to enable you to stretch out your legs and back after sitting for an extended period of time. For a bit of extra comfort, I've got this foam padding that is so soft to the touch and it helps take away the pressure from the soles of my feet. While on the subject of comfort, we might as well talk about the home office chair. Now, given that we spend majority of our time seated when working in our spaces, it's important to get a chair that's comfortable and promotes good posture. Having switched from a cheap flimsy gaming chair, I cannot agree more. My IMS office chair has come in clutch in that regard and judging from the comments, most of you are super curious about it. I mean, just look at all of this. An important thing to be on the lookout for before pulling the pin would be ergonomics. Basically, ensuring it has adjustable features like height, armrest and lumbar support to ensure you can customize it to your body's needs. 
I'd also recommend going for one with casters or wheels for easy movement around your workspace. And another thing to look out for is wheels that are suitable for your type of flooring. You'd also want to get something that stands the test of time and a good way to do so is looking at customer reviews. Personally, I made that mistake when I first got my gaming chair. After a few months of use, the screws started falling off, the cushions withered, and the leather started ripping off, but with my IMS office chair, the quality speaks for itself. Finally, while not directly related to the chair's functionality, the visual appeal of the chair can contribute to your overall satisfaction. Over here, you'll want to consider the chair's design and color to ensure it fits well with your home office decor. Case in point, my IMS office chair carries on with the warmer theme of my setup. Moving along, like most of you would attest, a high quality webcam is essential, especially when on Zoom or Skype calls, putting in mind most monitors don't come with inbuilt cameras. My personal favorite being the Insta360 link and with features like face striking, zoom in and out by use of hand gestures, your Zoom calls will stand out above the rest and that's not all. With remote work so popular nowadays, high quality video comes off as professional and sometimes in job interviews when it goes down to the wire, that might just be the separator. Thanks to its AI capabilities, when on those meetings, you'll be able to explain things on the whiteboard with so much ease. If you'd like a deep dive into it, I'll leave a link of the original review in the description box. On the flip side, it's quite costly but there are lots of budget options out there like the Logitech C920 at just 70 American dollars but you'll lose out on the 4K quality and wide angle lens. Moving along, like they say, sound is 50% of the viewing experience and I've been using the Blue Yeti microphone for a while now but I'll be upgrading to the Shure SM7B in an upcoming home office upgrade video. Make sure you sub to the channel because you wouldn't want to miss out on that one. As for the Blue Yeti, it has a variety of techy audio patterns but when it comes to recordings, Cutted Mode is the best when it comes to what I do. It's a simple plug and play microphone so you wouldn't need an audio interface. Still on the topic of sound, good quality speakers are also important especially when editing your footage. While audio perception is subjective, there's suddenly a baseline on what's good and what's not, in which case the fundamental guidelines should always be clarity, detail, dynamic range and clear separation between the audio frequencies. In the case of my setup, I went with the Kanto YU2 speakers which not only provide good quality sound but also perfectly blend with the walnut theme of my desk. The only gripe I have with them is the price and at 446 Australian dollars, they sit on the premium budget end of the market but there are a lot cheaper speakers like the Edifier speakers which are more than half the price and can give you the same aesthetic for the walnut lovers out there whilst not sacrificing on the quality of sound. Moving along, another important essential in your home office is storage. Like most of you would attest, over time we gather accessories, gear, etc, etc and with no proper storage in place, that can easily blow out of control. Ask me, I've got first hand experience. After doing my home office makeover, I took care of most of that but over the last two years there's been lots of stuff coming in and that means more storage space. Just another reminder, like mentioned earlier, that will come in my home office and desk setup upgrade video so make sure you sub to the channel so that you don't miss out. Starting on the left corner, I've got this IKEA shelf that I used to store some of my books and gear. Moving right across, I've got this industrial shelving unit that holds my printer, watch box and lots of other miscellaneous office items. Adding extra floating shelves and pegboards also helps you display items in your setup. In my case, these vintage cameras, a disassembled iPhone 5, my rugby trophies and lots of miscellaneous office items in the pegboard base. When it comes to the desk, the monitor riser not only adds storage space for things like laptops, touch all trays, but also provides visual structure to the desk. In a previous video, I covered how the setup looks with and without the riser. If you'd ask me, it looks a lot better with the riser. For those out in the market for one, over the last few years, there has been an explosion in companies making desk shelves and while they can cost an arm and a leg, there's lots of budget options you can get on Amazon or if you're good with the tools, you can make one yourself. Moving further down, side drawers also provide extra storage for items you don't want lying on your desk and the IKEA Alex drawers being the most popular. To take my drawer storage a notch higher, I added drawer organizers for my IKEA to keep everything neat and tidy. When it comes to lighting, it is important to have a primary light source. In my case, the huge window on the left provides plenty of natural light but when I want full control of my edits in post or just additional light on gloomy days, my Godox SL60W paired with the softbox come in clutch.
As most of you know, lighting is important when shooting your videos. For those who don't have enough natural light, a light source is super important and there's lots of budget options in the market out there. And if you're just starting out, this light kit comes with lots of accessories and for just 216 Australian dollars, I think it's quite a steal. With time, you'll upgrade to the Amarans and the apertures of the world if need be. Moving away from the production side of lighting, it is also important to set different moods and reduce eyes to one working at night. This is where the BenQ screen by Halos or the Xiaomi is coming. Something to note though, the BenQ screen by Halo is quite pricey, so I'd suggest going for the Xiaomi which is a lot more budget friendly. When it comes to setting different moods, that's where smart bulbs, LED light strips come in and there's an avalanche of many brands out there. The catch with smart lighting comes with connectivity. A lot of these brands are not very good when it comes to connection and Philips Hue have been a mainstay but an upcoming brand like Govi has been really good so I'd suggest going for something like that. That's mainly because Govi is a lot more pocket friendly. Moving along, this essential is quite subjective since not everyone is into plants and when you factor in the care needed, that's enough to scare away most people but before you have a go at me in the comment section, this is the setup without the plants and this is the setup with the plants. See how big of a difference they make? For those who are a bit persuaded but are still on the fence because of the care, a good place to start is with the full plants and slowly incorporate real plants that don't need a lot of care, for example the devil's ivy. With the devil's ivy, give them a drink once or twice a week and you're good to go. To give you guys some perspective, I killed my fair share of plants before I finally got the green thumb and once I got the hang of it, they've been part and parcel of all my spaces. Moving on, by far the most important of all the essential is making sure your home office and desk setup remain organized otherwise, regardless of the cool looking accessories and peripherals, it still wouldn't be aesthetically pleasing. If you've got to this point of the video, leave a thumbs up in the comment section and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. By the way, feel free to tag me on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok so that I can check out your setups. The links to my socials will be in the description box below. Check out this video of my desk setup to see how I put those tips into play. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.